What's up? It's your boy Big G. Back again with yet another video, yet another story, yet another experience that I endured by being a correctional officer on Rikers Island. Make sure you hit that button, like, subscribe, hit that bell, let you know when I got new videos coming out. Subscribe to my page, walk with your boy, because I got some more stories coming to you. You know, I'm getting a lot of good response from everybody, and I'm thankful for everybody who already subscribed. If you're new to my page, my book, Corruption Officer, is on Amazon. Everything you wanted to know about being a CEO but were afraid to ask is in that book, Five Star Reviews. So I'm going to get to it. Yeah, so um, for about 10, 11 years, I was a correction officer on Rikers Island, right? Um, little brief introduction, you know, I did some bad things which in, ended me up going into prison. But one of the things that, that everybody in the city, everybody in New York City, that is, or anybody who had to do time on Rikers Island or even worked as a CEO on Rikers Island is, is three mythical stories that you're going to hear in the academy, you're going to hear from inmates, you're going to hear from uh, officers that, that work there. The first one is um, about female correction officers going to sleep on post. That's a no-no. That's a no-no for any officer to go to sleep on post. But in particular, females, if you're working in an all-male a uh, housing area, a dorm area. If you go to sleep, you know these dudes don't have no care in the world about you or your well-being. You know, the thing is, as correction officers, some we feel that most inmates have, uh, I'm going to say, respect for themselves as men, you know, and not really going to be doing uh, disrespectful things. I mean, they do disrespectful things, but I'm saying... One on one, they'll do some disrespect to you, but in a dorm setting, it's less likely that a grown man is going to expose himself and all that stuff in front of other fifty other men just to violate you. But it happens. It has happened, and that's what that's the number one myth first that you're going to hear about Right Gazelle and about female correction officers that went to sleep and male inmates, you know, putting stuff on their face. Why they sleep and they wake up with clean skin and all that. So that's that's one of the myths that you're going to hear. And that's one of the warnings. I'm not going to say myths. That's one of the warnings about the stories of Rikers Island that when you go to the academy, they're going to tell you about that. Just to scare you or warn you not to go to sleep. You know, male or female. But this story happened to be in particular about a female. Number two. The number two... Um, story that you're going to hear about is, is going to be about a correction officer, a male correction officer that fell in love with a female inmate, right? And Rose M. Singer, that's, that's the full female jail on Rikers Island. And y'all know what happens. You've seen stories, you heard stories, you heard, heard, every inmate done came home talking about how they don't banged out a female CO on a job. A lot of them, I think, be lying, but then again, sometimes I've witnessed, I've seen things where that could be true. But while you coming through the academy to be an officer, why, if you go to jail, you get to talking to other inmates, they're going to tell you about these stories. One, about the female that got sprayed on, and two, about this officer who fell in love with an inmate and tried to get her, help her get to escape prison, escape Rackers Island. This is the way he did it. He went in and he bought an extra uniform with him, right? He got to, this is how the story went. I wasn't there. I'm not going to tell you, but I'm just telling you, you're going to hear these stories if you ever go to Rikers Island or try to you know, be a CO. He smuggled a, a uniform in for this particular female uh, inmate, fake badge, and all that, the whole get up. Uh, she, if, evidently, she put it on, you know, and she walked right out to prison with the uniform on. He met her out there. They were outside in the parking lot trying to get away, trying to make a getaway. And guess what happened? Allegedly, though, the, he forgot the keys to his car in the locker room, in his locker. Had to go back. Now, if you don't know about traveling on Rikers Island, officers, it's a, it's a main control 
uh, station where everybody drives their car across Rikers Island. They park their car and then they go to this control building where these route buses, these buses come, pick up the officers, you know, and take them to their pr prospective prisons. So it's a journey getting off of Rikers Island. And then supposedly this inmate made it all the way out the front door with an officer's uniform on, had the hat pulled down, had the shield, everything, made it out. Made it all the way on the bus. Nobody saying nothing. Made it all the way to this officer's car. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? He had to go back to get his keys. So now he had to go back, wait for the route bus, get on the route bus, take him to his jail, run in there, get his keys, and then come back. Well, when he left to go get on the route bus to go get, you know, go back to re retrieve his keys, she had to stand outside by his car and wait for him in that uniform. The only way she got caught is that she was a loud mouth female that used to get in trouble. And one particular officer walking by at the park in her car looked at her and recognized her in that uniform and you know, blew the whistle and got them caught. That's the only way they got caught is that homie had to go get the keys, you know, get his keys to his car. You know, I don't know because this is like I said, this is like it's three minutes. That's the second one, because in order to get off the island, even though even me as an officer, I still even if I'm in uniform, you know, if I'm in uniform, they really don't question it. But if I was out of uniform, I have to show my my um, my ID and then I got to pop the trunk. So maybe it would they would have got out there if she had the uniform on and they were driving off. Maybe they, they wouldn't have asked, you know, for her ID or his ID. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the, that's like the second myth. The dude fell in love, trying to help a female escape, and she got caught. Now, in the last one that you're going to, like I'm saying, all three days you're going to hear. The last one is about, back in the day, about two Chinese brothers, or I mean two brothers, that got arrested, that uh, they had them hands. And when they got inside the jail, they tried to separate them and they didn't want to be separated. So in the pen and everything, it went down. It went down and these dudes with black belts and whatever it is, allegedly, they, they kicked a lot of officers behind. Allegedly. They kicked a lot of officers behind and it went down in history. A lot of officers went into the hospital, but eventually the officers overwhelmed them. And allegedly they killed one of them. One of them died and the other one just got beat up real bad. But before they went down, they, they said they put a whipping on some correction officers behind. You know what I'm saying? So this is Big G. You're going to hear a lot of myths, a lot of stories, a lot of tales about Rikers Island. Because you know it's one of the most notorious, notorious jails in New York City, in the world. Everybody knows about Rikers Island, but I guarantee you. Anybody who's been to Rikers Island, going to hear about them three stories right there. It's your boy, Big G. I got more coming. Just stick, stay tuned with your man. Walk with me. Like and subscribe to the page. And don't forget, Corruption Officer Book. I'm still working on that movie. That series is still coming. It's your boy, and I'm out.